1990, this was at Fort Gordon, so this was in Augusta, Augusta, Georgia. And I was a security holdover. <laughs> well, it was a matter of national security. Uh, I passed the course, uh, I was on a graduate, but they did not, I did not have any orders, so I didn't have anything to do, so they were, I was a janitor. I was a janitor at the gym across from the uh, barracks, so uh, I had this, I would go over there every day, I'd have to clean up the women's, men and women's locker rooms and, you know, the bathrooms, I have to like sweep the, uh, the basketball courts, stuff like that, I have to clean the, uh, the Nautilus equipment, stuff like that, and uh, that was my job. And I worked for this civilian guy. I can't remember his name, but he was very cool. He looked like a, he looked a lot like Forrest Whitaker, but he had a white beard. He was older, and uh, he had, but he had a real like a sleepy eye. It was a huge gym. I mean, it was like the size of a, almost the size of a LA Fitness or something like that. It was like they had two basket, maybe more than that. A lot of basketball courts, just huge weight room, you know, weight area, and the, like Nautilus room, this, all this stuff's kind of going out of style anyway. But anyway, it's 1990. So they had this R&B station there in Augusta that they played over the PA system. But when, when my boss would leave, if he ever left during the day, I would change the station over to rock. The station had been on all weekend, and then the next, Monday when I came in, I'm pretty sure it was still on rock. Nobody had moved the station yet. And all of a sudden, they just kept on playing Stevie Ray and they weren't even taking any breaks. I was like, uh-oh, this ain't good. I think they had Texas Flood on random because they just kept playing. The whole record was playing. And uh, so I was like, man, something is up. So I went back, I got off work, I went back over to the billets. And I had a, you know, I had a boom box in there, so I turned it on. And uh, one of the songs was ending up. And uh, finally a DJ came on and he told the news that Steve had died in the helicopter. And uh, I had just turned 22. My birthday was on the 20th and he, this was August 27th, I think, that he died. And, you know, I just started crying. It just broke my damn heart. It just broke my heart. I think he was no more than around 35, somewhere. I don't think he was 40 yet. And, uh, you know, he got cleaned up, got off the coat. So it being his birthday and everything, and since basically that was my entire gig list, it was Stevie Ray Vaughan back in the day. Uh, that's not completely true, but we did do a lot of Stevie Ray and I played it on this guitar too, so I decided to break this one out and uh, just do a little dedication to him because He's always just going to be probably my number one influence in terms of playing style. Um, he's not my number one influence when it comes to guitars. But in terms of how I learn to play, he is the biggest influence. You know, I'll always be indebted to him for that. And here's to you, man.